Good evening and welcome to our COVID-19 special edition on Channels Television, your home for the news. I'm Melissa Walker. It's a 30-minute daily update at noon at 6 p.m. and a 45-minute update at 9 p.m. on the coronavirus pandemic in Nigeria and across the world. Now, first, here are some highlights. Prime Minister Boris Johnson tests positive to COVID-19, remains in self-isolation. National Centre for Disease Control puts number of COVID-19 cases at 65. And President Mohamed Buhari commends private sector support, also orders immediate release of 15 billion naira to fight the pandemic. Let's begin. The number of COVID-19 cases in Nigeria is rising by the day. Latest information from the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, puts the figures at 65. There are 14 new cases made up of 12 in Lagos and one in the Federal Capital Territory and one in Bochi State. The NCDC further says of the 14 latest cases, six of the new cases were detected on a vessel, three are returning travelers into the country, while two are close contacts of confirmed cases. A breakdown of the confirmed Confirmed cases show that Lagos now has 44, FCT 11, Open State 3, Bochi State 2, Ekiti Oyo, Edo Rivers and Oshun States have one case each. Out of the total 65 cases, 61 are described as active by the NCDC, three cases discharged and one death recorded. Well, now, those numbers from the NCDC have been confirmed by the Minister of Health, Dr. Sage Hanire, at a briefing in Abuja today. Dr. Hanire is encouraging Nigerians who are self-isolating to report any symptoms observed to the Nation Nigeria, the National Center for Disease Control, NCDC, or call their helplines. Now, according to the Minister of Health, they are also working with the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to support communities this period to reduce the risk of exposure. While stations, land borders and international airports remain closed, precautionary measures are also being taken by the federal government to protect our seaports. Only ships that have been at sea for more than 14 days can dock in our ports after crew members have been confirmed negative for COVID-19. An exception to this 14-day restriction are vessels carrying oil and compressed natural gas products because they require minimal or no contact at all between the crew and the ground personnel. With the increasing number of cases, Lagos is still the epicenter of the COVID-19 outbreak in Nigeria. The Federal Government of Nigeria has released 10 billion Naira grant to Lagos State to increase its capacity to respond to COVID-19 outbreak. Another 5 billion Naira Special Intervention Fund has been released to NCDC to equip, expand and provide personnel to its facilities and laboratories across the country. The Federal Government also, through the Nigeria Air Force, has made provisions to bring back essential NCDC staff who have been away on training but could not return to Nigeria due to the instituted measures to close down airports in Nigeria and other countries. The Chinese government has promised to give us uh, technical support for some of their experts so we can we'll connect with their experts on public health and the infection prevention and uh, control measures and also the experts in clinical management. So we shall be taking up that uh, offer to get the expertise uh, directly from China, who have a lot of experience in this, uh, with this problem. 
staying in the nation's capital. Our National Assembly correspondent, Linda Kibwe, joins us live from our Abuja studios. Hello, Linda. We've been learning of state governors testing, self-isolating and their aides as well. Uh, for members of the National Assembly, we know plenary has been suspended. Give us a sense of what lawmakers are doing this period. Hello, Millicent. Now, it's a watch and see situation for some lawmakers, just like many Nigerians are basically just watching and seeing what would happen. Some of them I spoke with are mostly staying indoors to avoid being infected by the virus. Um, a lawmaker I spoke with, spoke with told me he's undergoing 14 days of um, self-isolation because he attended the retreat on the petroleum industry bill in London. I also learned that many lawmakers did not travel to their states choosing to stay put in Abuja, the capital city. Usually when there is a recess or a break in plenary, we see lawmakers traveling to their states, but this time many of them are indeed choosing to remain in Abuja, the capital city. All right, so I, I guess we, we don't know about much of the sensitization uh, between lawmakers and constituents, but you've been around a few areas in the federal capital territory. Tell us uh, what you observe with regards to compliance levels there. Okay, as, as regards um, the, the, the constituency sensitization by lawmakers, one of the lawmakers I spoke with said, you know, he's leaving this sensitization to the medical experts, you know, to avoid conflicting messages. He says, these medical experts know better than, than lawmakers, particularly those who do not have, um, you know, not from the medical profession. Then in terms of what is happening in the, in the capital city, we went round. There is a high level of compliance in the city center. Many shopping complexes are closed, you know, private businesses are, are on lock and key, on the lock and key. Only those, you know, providing essential services like hospitals are open. But the, the situation is a bit different in out of the city centre, that's in the satellite towns and the outskirts of the federal capital territory. And you have to know that the, the majority or many people who leave, who leave, who, who work in the FCT actually leave on the outskirts of, of, of Abuja, in areas like Kubwa, Maraba, Nyanya, Karu, Lube. So in those places, we it's actually somehow business as usual, particularly in the Maraba, Nyanya access. There's actually traffic jam. We actually went there. There is a, a lot of traffic going to those areas at starting from three o'clock and it's still on now. We goes to show that people are actually people who live in those areas are not obey, obeying the sit at home, you know, sit at home um, order by the FCT administration. They are out and then non-essential non businesses are actually open. We know that the 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 cap the the wood market or the, the furniture market in Kubo, close to Marabanyanya, is still on its business as usual. They are all there. And so it begs the question, what is happening? Is it that there, isn't, there hasn't been enough sensitization by the FCT authorities to tell these people to, you know, to uh, let these people understand what exactly is the situation and the need for them to sit at home, you know, to flatten the curve? All right. Thank you, Linda. Well, we're coming back here in Lagos, where we hear the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sonwolu, is brief. Thing, um, the state. Let's take a listen. Dear Lagosians, good evening. I'm here again to update you on the COVID-19 situation in Lagos. Since my last address to you on Tuesday, March 22nd, 24th, 2020, we have seen, seen an increase in the number of confirmed cases nationwide with Lagos having a significant number of those newly confirmed cases. Our numbers have grown up from 29 earlier on Tuesday, as at the last address, to 44, um, as at this briefing this evening. Of these 44, six of the additional 15 that we've seen were from an intervention vessel offshore out of Lagos here. The health authorities promptly quarantined the vessel and ensured that the crew were all duly tested. I'm sure this shows clearly that our surveillance and our tracking system are functioning and they are working well. As things stand now, most of the cases we're dealing with have been imported cases. But we're also starting to see a trend that suggests 
that we may be entering a phase where community transmission of the disease could also be coming in. Fortunately, because we have shut down all the land, sea, and air borders, we are now able to fully focus on tracking and halting within our communities. I'm pleased to also know that all our confirmed cases are doing well and that they are all in stable condition. Of course, we know that a total of three have since been discharged. And in fact, as I read this address, um, we are in the process of um, reconfirming another five or six additional patients that once they turn a second positivity, a second negativity, they might be um, allowed to go home later tonight or tomorrow, once the, the results are out. This, I imagine, are good news, and we are hopeful that we'll continue to see a swift recovery of this nation, of this nature. Even as we scale up our contact tracing to ensure that every case that is already within our shores are identified, they are isolated, and they are properly treated. Fellow Lagosians, I'm also not unaware of the effect of all our restrictive interventions and the consequences, especially to our people. Particularly, we realize that the consequences of the restrictive order will have on the very vulnerable sector of our economy. It is also a fact that we have people who, because of their daily means of livelihood, have been affected. And so we needed to have some stimulus package set out immediately. So earlier today, I visited one of our 20 identified food banks that we have established across the metropolis to cater for feeding of our people. We are by this intervention targeting those who earn daily wage for feed, to feed their families, those who are vulnerable, the, what we consider as the lower pack of the triangle, the elderly and the fiscally challenged. Um, they are the ones that we're looking at to see how we stamp out food, um, food bank for them. And of course, for us to be also be very fair and be transparent with this process, we're also looking at our existing database for Lagos Social Register of Poor and Vulnerable Amongst Us, which certainly cut across the 377 words. So at the first instance, we're targeting a food bank for about 200,000 families, 200,000 households. And household will consist of a father, a mother, and, and four children. And so we're providing stable food such as rice, beans, gari, bread, uh, pepper, water, um, in a full package to each and every of these households that we are identifying. And so all these food banks are going to be at our various local governments, and I think we're starting out, if not later today, by tomorrow, and we're good to go, and to ensure that we reach out to all our various local governments. I'm also happy to inform you that we have formally launched what we call a neighborhood market, which we have identified 50 large public school premises across the state that can accommodate temporary open markets where all essential food and household materials, daily essential materials, will be available for sale at affordable prices, when I mean at cost prices. This neighborhood market will operate every two, two days, meaning that if they come to a particular location today, in three days time, two days will be off, they will come back to that same location. And so we're targeting 50 of such neighborhood markets right around our massive big public schools. This we believe would help achieve a number of goals that are in line with our guidelines of a healthy um, nutrition, will also produce, will also reduce the incident of people needing to travel 
um, across um, various locations to try and get into a market. So that's why we have set up um, this neighborhood market to ease the commuting and um, the travel time for our communities. As I've always stated, and I want to also reiterate again in very strong terms, that let us refrain from gathering or congregating in any kind at this time. We have put in place palliative measures that will cushion the effect of the restriction. We would expect maximum compliance from you. That is the least, at least, we will expect from all of us. After this briefing today as well, I will also be signing what we call the Lagos State Infectious Disease Emergency Prevention Regulation 2020. It's an exercise of my power confined on me by the federal and state laws. These regulations will give legal and enforcement backing all our actions that we have taken so far. And it will help us ensure that we contain the spread of COVID-19 within Lagos State. They also prescribe stringent penalties to all those who defer or fail to comply with the directives that will be issued in the regulation. The devastating images and stories from other parts of the world should serve as a warning and a lesson to all of us in the country that this pandemic is serious and it can still double up in our community if we're not careful. While we must refrain from undue panic, it is also very important for us to be very realistic about the situations at our hands and to remain committed to acting sensibly and responsibly as individuals and as citizens. I want to also say and right away that we're in this together as Lagosians, I want to imagine that we will come out of it well, stronger and better. But I want to put on notice and acknowledge the support of the private sector that we're receiving so far. But I think it's important at this point that I also thank first the federal government of Nigeria under the able leadership of President Muhammad Buhari for supporting the state government with a huge generous grant we would also especially thank Mr. President for his leadership, role, and support, and for recognizing Lagos as the epic center of his pandemic in our country. And our pledge is that we will continue to work in cooperation with all of the federal government organs as a state under his able leadership. We will also want to thank members of the organized private sector who have been collaborating with us at all of the efforts we're seeing around the building of isolation centers, donations in cash and in kind. Some are giving us equipment, medical supplies. I will be acknowledging each and every one of them in due course. I also want to thank and extend gratitude to a very important community, which we we'll call the FMCG, which are fast-moving consumer groups, all of the big um, conglomerates that have household products. They are the ones that are partner and will work with us at the 50 neighborhood markets that have alighted earlier. They have been of great support, and we're believing that all the produce and products they'll be bringing will be at cost. So I want to thank them um, on behalf of all Lagosians ahead. Let me also restate the fact that these indeed are very difficult times for all of us, and we need to act fast and responsibly. Urgency is critical just so that we can reduce and stand the growth of this in our community. People, and some people think that the virus is for some set of people or is for a rich or for um, some part of the community. I think it's important for us to reiterate again that the disease is not a respecter of anybody, be it rich, be it poor. It doesn't look at gender, class, or race. 
So everybody is at risk. And that's why we keep saying to all of us to restrain and obey the rules and regulations that we have set for ourselves. I'm sure you're also aware that we have started um, fumigation and um, the insectification of the whole community. Uh, we have about 200 um, machines that we have procured and they had started work today. We'll see a lot of work tonight, tomorrow, and on Sunday, and thereafter. And so the disinfection is to cater for all our public areas, parks, markets, pub, um, bus stops, and all of our highways. They will be entering each and every of those communities, and they will start spraying. They are non-toxic sprays, so they are not harmful but they'll probably just be able to kill the droplets of the virus that are in our community. Earlier today as well, this evening, I was also at the EOC, which is where we have um, the infectious disease hospital in Yaba. And on behalf of all Lagosians, I needed to go there and encourage the medical personnel that are working there to say to them that we appreciate what they're doing to encourage them and to say that our prayers and our best wishes are with them i also saw for myself that some of the patients that we were expecting that will be discharged that they started attending to them and also i think it's also important that whilst i was there Overnight, we had to rescue about 14 Nigerian students that were stranded at the Seme border. I'm happy to inform that they've all been brought to, um, to the hospital this evening, and all of them would be isolated, and they will need to go and um, have themselves tested. If they all turn negative, we'll allow them to go home and be joined with their family because I know that some of them, their parents are pretty anxious right now, but they're in safe hands. Um, I saw them and I said to them that um, they don't have anything to worry. Um, this was something that I had to have a conversation with the controller of immigration um, last night because they were stranded at the border. But we're happy that they are all with us now and we'll just conduct the test. And once we're satisfied, will let them go back and reunite with their families. I think our collective effort is therefore required to defeat this pandemic. And it is only with our cooperation, with all of our cooperation, that will achieve the desired goal of arresting this disease in its track and preventing it from escalating beyond control and imagination. I want to thank you again for listening I think we'll just take a few questions or clarification that you might want. Um, the Commissioner for Health is here and also the Commissioner for Information. Thank you very much, gentlemen of the press. Thank you very much. Journalists with questions, can you just indicate and I'll bring the microphone to you. Uh, the fact that you, you've uh, announced the, the food packages as, as part of that type of stimulus, but I wanted to ask whether or not there are plans in place for a direct financial incentive to ease economic hardships. And in addition to that, I, I acknowledge that you've announced the, the, the creation of neighborhood markets so that that would ease the need for people to go out onto the streets. But are there any other plans in place to, to, to restrict movement? something like an interstate border or a curfew. Are you moving in that direction anytime soon? Thank you very much for the question. Um, the, the last part of it is, are we moving in the direction of curfew soon? Yes, we are. We are, there, there are indices that need to happen. There are numbers that we need to see for us to know that we need to shut down um, everywhere. But we haven't seen that number. Like I said, as we're having cases coming in, we're also excited because we're seeing very positive response and um, we're seeing very positive um, patients also 
at the, at the, at the, at the edge of um, being discharged. So that, for us, shows that there's some balance that is coming in. And so we're checking it. You know, where there, there's some numbers at the EOC today. They told me that there's some number that we need to see. We need to see a huge spike, right? And, and we'll know that, yes, maybe we're, we're indeed there. And it's, we'll probably get to that. But first part of your question is what are the other stimulus that we're looking at? We're looking at our data. We we'll probably will do that at some point, but we're looking at, you know, data is something that is critical. We need to know, you know, how do we access the truth. You know, it's the food, the food bank is very easy. It's, I can identify you. I know where you are. I can come to your residence or come to and I give it to you. But other things around cash rationing, you know, there's a lot of other, um, um, other crossing the T and dotting the I's that needs to come to that. But it's not out of place for us, yes. We, we will consider it you know, at some point in time. Good evening, Governor. My name is Theophila Selama from TBC. I'd um, like to ask now if, yes, the Lagos State government is doing well in, as regards curbing the spread, but in the event that there is a community wide spread, have you identified the communities that this might happen? Thank you very much. So, earlier this afternoon, too, the Honorable Commissioner did a presentation um, um, in Alausa. And he was able to uh, graphically and empirically show us what and where has been the prevalence. You know, in Lagos, the highest local government in terms of um, what we've seen is Etiosa and Ikeja. So that for us is we, we know. So we know where um, the highest numbers of, of, of patients or, or the prevalence have appeared from. So we have a graph. That shows where so that's the community or that is a host place where we can sort of like narrow down and pinpoint so it's etiosa ikeja and in in that manner and i'm sure he can say that because i saw his presentation and i know that he has geography we know the number if it's male female we know the trend and so we have we have it all and we're watching it you know My name is Titula Yabero from China City. We would like to know how the neighborhood markets would operate. Would they be distributing the food items door to door? And also concerning the public transport system, most of those yellow buses are not still complying with the laws on ground, you know, of not carrying more than eight passengers and all of that. What are you doing in that regard, sir? Well, thank you very much. So the neighborhood markets are open market. Um, so what we've done is we've identified our public schools that have huge grounds. And that's, that's the first consideration and is well um, safe guided. That's the first consideration. You must have a massive uh, playground. So what we're going to be doing there, you'll see there are going to be different stalls that are well separated and are distant. Right? So you'll see um, different companies bringing um, day to day daily needs. Um, daily essentials there, and you also see produce, like a typical farm's market, also coming in there. So people can come in and do some daily shopping um, that they require, right? But it's all going to be on a massive um, ground. The, the whole idea is we don't want people to need to travel distance to the very big markets that we have. And we also need to slow down, you know, the interaction at the big markets. We need to slow down people struggling at the very big markets that we know, and so that we reduce traffic, you know, and the population in those markets. So that's why we've, we've worked this out to very quickly create these 50 new neighborhood markets, you know, so they'll be using the, 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 the ground. So they'll be, they'll be selling, that's why we, I, I have acknowledged them, and I've thanked them, they'll be selling all of these things that, um, at like a cost price. There will be like the retail, um, the wholesale prices that you probably not even get in the market. So, and they will ensure that you are not buying to go and resell. You know, so when you come and you say you want to buy 10 cartons of something, that certainly does not um, come under your daily needs. Um, that means you have other needs or you have other plans for that. So those are some of the um, workings that we've agreed um, with them. Um, regarding um, yellow buses and, and the drivers, I, I think the first thing is, we just need to help ourselves. We don't have, if you don't have a need to go out, please don't go out. 
That's rule number one. Rule number one is stay indoors. It's only if you're on essential service that you've been allowed to go out. And rule number two still comes down from rule number one. Stay indoor again. So it's really for us to tell our people that the first and the second rule is for us to not go out. It's to stay indoor. Whilst we do not want to shut down the entire economy, it's like I said, we, we understand that it, it's an economy that still needs to run a little bit. But like I said, once we see the, the, the numbers that we do not want to see, it, it will happen. My name is Omolara Amosoya and I work for Radio Nigeria. Sir, um, you said the food pack you are going to be providing for the less privileged, you handed it over to the local government. I would like to know the mechanism you have put in place so that this will not be hijacked and turned into a party affair because we've witnessed such in the past. And secondly, how do you identify the most vulnerable? So like I said, um, I said we have, we have a database that shows the poorest and the vulnerable, and that's why I said transparently that the first set of people that will be dealing with, we have about 75,000 in that household, the very vulnerable and, and um, indigent in our community. So that database is with us. And we're working right down to our words. Right, so mentioning local government doesn't mean that we're taking anything to local government. We're actually taking it to the wards, you know, where they congregate. That's really where we're, where we're taking it. So we've done a lot of statistics in the last two, three days, right? And so we will we, we'll imagine that we will have some glitches here and there, but we're hoping that we'll be able to, for the first 200,000, we're hoping that we'll get, I mean, a 70 to 80 percent success, you know, and let's be real with ourselves 70 to 80 percent success to be sure that it gets to the vulnerable and, and the less privileged amongst us. And by the way, the package we're giving can serve that household for 14 days. The package that you'll be getting can serve you for 14 days. The whole family, it's enough to, to feed you for the next two weeks. And that's what we're, we're bringing together you know, for them. My name is Marita Laina. I write for New Telegram. Uh, Mr. Governor, sir. I'm interested in knowing some of the provisions of the bills that you are about, you are about to sign into law with regard to the management of COVID-19. What are the do's? What are the don'ts? What sanctions are we to do for those laws? Well, okay, so you know, law is not something that I'm very good at. So, you know, the lawyers will tell you that we're educated, not, um, not learned. So once I sign it this evening, I'm sure it will go viral and you'll be able to read it. Um, I do not want to say provisions in, in the way in which I shouldn't say it, but my attorney general is there, and you can also still speak with him after this address. But he has advised me accordingly, and so I'm happy with what he has advised me. Thank you, Reverend. My name is Thompson. I report for AIT. My question is with regards to the European uh, that the commissioner once told us that there is a, a sample testing of, of, of sort with, in, in the state. So I want to know, uh, are there some positive response to the usage of chloroquine? Thank you. It's not my line. Um, the evidence is growing worldwide that chloroquine has some benefit in the prevention and treatment of COVID-19. Uh, but we have advised that uh, chloroquine is a toxic drug. It is not to be used without medical supervision. So we do not advise any members of the community to go and self-prescribe or to use chloroquine. If you are in our jurisdiction in the isolation ward, we may choose to use it if we feel that it's going to add benefit to your profile. We have other drugs at our disposal that we can use and are using. So what, chloroquine is becoming one of the drugs that is in our armament to treat our positive cases. We are commencing a clinical trial in the Ministry of Health in collaboration with the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research and the Nigerian Center for Disease Control to test 
the efficient chloroquine in our environment. Remember, every environment is different. Nick race is different. So what works in China or America may not necessarily work. So we need to put it to the test, and we're going to speed that clinical trial so that we can start to see some answers to advise the medical professionals on how to use chloroquine in the medical setting supervised by medical practitioners. Well, you've been watching a briefing by the Lagos State Governor Babajide Somolu on COVID-19 in the state, in Lagos State. And uh, just a while ago, uh, he signed the Lagos State Emergency Regulation, uh, talking about law enforcement backing some of the measures, the emergency intervention measures and actions that he has taken in recent times. And he says that they also have stringent penalties for those who failed to... Um, perhaps take time to follow uh, some of the measures that have been put in place. He also talked about his worry and the increase of cases, 44 in Lagos, and mentioned some of the interventions like the food market, uh, talked about the existing database, and he strongly said there must be or there should be maximum compliance, saying no gathering and also no congregating. Well, let's talk more about some of the things the state governor said. Joining us in the studio is um, Dr. Gonaya Iguilo. She's a member of the Association of Public Health Physicians of Nigeria. Thank you for joining us at Thank this time. Thank you for having me. So let's start with what you know the governor has, has said. I know that we had this discussion yes. before now about answered any unanswered questions in the war on COVID-19. So looking yes. at Lagos, from all the things you've heard, yeah. What do you think? Do you still have those questions unanswered? Um, so far, first of all, I have to commend the Lagos State Government because they are doing a tremendous job at curbing this community outbreak. Um, my un unanswered question is, will the transportation buses themselves also be disinfected? Because, you know, you have to also think about protecting commuters as well. They are doing a very good job in, you know, disinfecting the streets, the roads, the public spaces. And so as the ATMs, ATMs as well, some of the public spaces like ATMs, would they, those spaces also be disinfected as well? Just, just. Okay. Something he also mentioned was that where it's almost as if we're entering a phase of community transmission. He said most of uh, the cases in were imported. Yeah. And so some of these things um, are being put in place, even though we've shut the, the borders, land, air, yes. uh, and what have we. Yeah. Do you think there is a major threat to our communities in the state? Um, so, so far, based on you know, what the Lagos State Gov Governor has mentioned, so these measures are to protect or to even prevent, because now at this time, we are not sure anymore. So we are being proactive, which is a very good measure to do. So that's why he's putting in all this, you know, the stay at home ban. He's talking about, you know, bringing up, you know, the food market, disinfecting the streets, which is what, we, that, which is, what is often done when you're thinking about a community level of transmission. And the thing about community level of transmission is at some point in the chain, in terms of the index case, it's his contact or her contact, you, you're now having, you might be having pop up of cases that are no longer linked to some of those contact or index cases. Yes. So, so far, Lagos is doing a very good job at curbing this. He talked about outbreak. the process of reconfirming maybe five or six, uh, that test negative and, you know, yeah. asking them to go home. Uh, yeah. But looking at the neighborhood markets, he talked yeah. about statistics, uh, you know, identifying about 75,000 people vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, do you fear that maybe those markets in the open school might also be crowded? Oh, yes, definitely. Because that's also a very key concern I have, because you're looking at Lagos State has a population of over 21 million and you're having 50 neighborhood food markets. So how would that work? So I'm think, so you, and you want to avoid the issue of clustering because at the same time, you're going to have, you know, people coming in, rushing in because they are scared that, you know, they might not get those food stuffs and as well. So you have that, that worry is definitely there. Let's talk about um, the infections. Um, when we heard the minister, he said something that they are in a secure facility and that's for the perhaps extremely um, severe cases. Yes. But when we look at the infections and how it affects, you know, different people, why does it feel this way? I mean, why are the symptoms, why do they vary? And why does it attack, you know, depending yeah. the person differently? Okay, so it's, 
all tied to the vulnerability of each individual. We are all different. So if, for example, that's why it's been said to affect people that, for example, have chronic illnesses, the older generation, because at that point, the, it's either, and also as well, people where th that have lung capacities that have been affected, like you know, people that, that smoke or individuals that are asthmatic. And apart from that, you know, we are also looking at even, of course, the data has not yet shown, but you can also have, you know, Im, the, Im, um, the um, younger children or even those who are immunocompromised, because I think that would, in a way, still affect them as well. That's definitely possible because of the... Let's quickly ask you, fact, fiction, paper money, you mentioned ATMs being disinfected, but POS machine, what are the risks to Nigerians? Okay, so, you know, so far the World Health Organization have talked about how, you know, you can have the coronavirus lasting on certain surfaces. So definitely that's a possibility. That can happen. You can have the, because it's a droplet infection, you can have um, the droplets, for example, from an infected person being... Um, dropping on the money yes. or even on the ATM machines. Or POS. Uh, exactly, or POS. And you can have someone, hel someone else who is uninfected coming in contact with these um, objects. So that could also be a root of causing transmission and can even, of course, propagate it to such, to such a way that it becomes a community or even a widespread transmission. All right, we'd like to appreciate your inputs uh, today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Gunay Guilo, Member Association much. of Public Health Physicians of Nigeria. Thank you for having me.